All right, um, looking at the schedule, this is not the schedule. Um, how do I hide this before? Here we go. Looking at the schedule, we are on track. So essentially, um, this is uh, a week. Uh, this is week 10. So let's take a look at the schedule, bring it up. And derived classes with three source is what we have uh, gone through. So uh, two things we can do today. Um, um, <coughs> first, um, if anybody wants me, I can do a, <coughs> a review. If you have seen the notific notifications, I ask you to watch the video for the OP244 NAA section that I kind of approached the, um, I approached the, um, the classes with resource in a different way. And um, uh, it's a good idea to take a look at it and, uh, um, and see what it is. Um, anybody wants me to go through classes with resources again? Do you think it, it is needed for a review or anybody have any problem, any particular? Let's put it that way. Anybody wants, uh, so Victor says, yes. okay, and Nan says yes again. Okay, so, um, all right, so what I will do, I've got to take the approach that I have done for the, the other class and explaining about how classes with resources, um, derived classes with resources, a slow review, please. <laughs> okay, slow review. Okay, sure. Uh, uh, a slow review. So um, I am going to talk like this today. Hopefully, <laughs> all right. So um, okay, let's let's uh, let's do uh, uh, um, a review for today. But what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually use. Oh, that you don't need that. I'm going to use the uh, uh, the other sections uh, approach just to talk about uh, how it's how uh, uh, there you go how class derived classes with resources resources react. Uh, let me just bring this up right now. So we're going to go through it. New item. And I'm going to put prg.cpp. Okay. And, and uh, I'll show you what I have done over here. Take a look at what we have over here. So um, I'll try to take it as slow as possible. Um, um, at the beginning of the semester, I mentioned if you think that I'm talking too fast, because I tend to do that when I get excited, uh, um, s uh, slow me down. Tell me just far that slow down. You're going too fast, and, and, I'll, and I'll slow down. So <clears throat> what I'm doing over here is this. So I literally created a class called Base. Now, this class does not have any resource. So the existence of the rule of three are not required for this class. This class base, it has a data that is a single character. Uh, it, initial, it is initialized with a B at, as a default. And in any other case, it is initialized with a question mark. That question mark will never happen because when um, any other constructor is called over here, uh, although it's first initialized to question mark, but afterwards, it is overwritten by something else. So first of all, the, init the, the uh, initialization area supersedes the initialization that you have over here. So the question mark is not going to happen. It's going to be only B. Um, but I put that one over there just, uh, just in case. And for the copy constructor, just to see every if everything is OK, I put that question mark over there to make sure if the copying is not happening, we're going to see a question mark. That question mark will never happen. It's just there for us to make sure that the code we have written doesn't have a bug. In reality, we don't need that. So the, the default constructor of this class base sets the data to B. Uh, 
the one argument constructor of the class base sets the data to whatever it's set to the copy constructor prints a message that it's being copied and then copies the data the copy assignment sends the message that it's being assigned and if it's not a self assignment copies the data and the destructor simply prints a message and then we have a show that shows the uh, the base so essentially what we have over here is something like this let me just go through the main so when I create a base in here I'm gonna go base B if I just do this and go see out B let's go through it one by one understand exactly how base works and then we're gonna go for the derive and then we're gonna see exactly how derived classes with resources going to react and work so starting with this as you see the default constructor of B is called therefore it comes to the default constructor and M data over here that is garbage it's gonna be overwritten by B therefore it's gonna have a B inside and and when I when I come back over here and show it it goes to the show function of the base calls the show method of base and it shows base B and then it goes to new line and we are done are we all okay with what I just wrote over here all right stop me if you are not okay and I'm gonna uh, continue with it okay uh, Maria is not okay what's going on um professor you said something about the base the base um class notes requiring rule of three mm -hmm. but I didn't catch that okay the reason you so um, when do we need rule of three do you remember don't turn off your uh, microphone let's talk okay when does a class need rule of three do you remember that no okay so I let don't. me explain it no that's okay that's okay let me explain it. so you know when we have two classes this is actually how that classes well when you when you have a class you create an instance of a class correct yeah. and then inside that class you have some data correct okay. yeah. now when all the data reside inside the class when another class of that instance is instantiated oh that's not a class another class is instantiated of the same type and you compile you ask the compiler to copy that compiler what it what the compiler does it simply goes through everything inside that class blindly copies everything right to the other one which means the other class will have with the other class will have exactly what this class have it's going to have this one if I can draw it properly this one and this one so essentially this class becomes an exact copy of this one the reason that this copy is successful is because everything inside is inside the class when the copying is done blindly everything is a replica of the other one with no effort this is when we do not need uh, rule of three are we good okay. yeah now, when do we need rule of three when we have a class when we have a class like this so the class is created over here and this class of ours doesn't have the data inside but it has a tiny little pointer over here and that pointer is actually pointing to a data that is outside of the class not inside the class okay now okay. when this class wants to get copied when this class wants to get copied compiler what it what the compiler does copies the entire inside of the class into the other one correct yeah so all that is going to copy is going to be that little tiny pointer over here correct and yeah. the content inside so what happens the pointer of the other class will point to the place that the other one is pointing correct yeah 
is is this one copied sorry is this one copied no it's the same one so the copying did not happen why because the resources of the class reside outside of the class compiler by default only copies the inside therefore the outside one is not copied this is when we have to create the rule of three which means tell to the compiler hey you are not doing the proper copy let me do the copy for you so the comp when you do the copying compiler says okay take over so it goes to the copy construction sequence of hours and in that one hopefully when we look there is something like this first we're going to measure see what is the size of that one uh, of the data that we have over there then we're going to say I'm going to create the exact same size of data of that one then you're going to copy everything manually yourself from that one to this one then you're going to make this one point to there and after the copying is done you have a replica of the two are we okay with this yes okay this is when we need rule of three because the data is not inside the class then we have to take over and do it in this base class of mine as you see we have the data inside the base class there is no pointer to the outside correct yeah so i don't need to create these rule of three there is absolutely no need for it the only reason i'm doing it to you to teach you when is it called and how it is it is triggered my purpose of this example is to just demonstrate for you when the rule of three are invoked obviously i am doing in here what the compiler does automatically whoops i am doing here what the compiler does automatically which is essentially copying one character to another and because the character is inside it will do it anyway and the exact same thing for assignment and I'm not even doing anything in a destructor because nothing is being deleted it's being deleted automatically by itself so my purpose of this example is to create uh, create the rule of three and put messages inside so I can track of it and understand when they are being called and how they are triggered do we understand this yes all right that's that's all um, yes Please, can you write a quick example of um, a data pointing to a resource outside its class? Just a quick sample, just to be sure I didn't miss anything. Sure. A quick example of that. class base with resource with resource integer pointer dynamic array um, integer size public uh, base with whoa. what is it doing I'm copying this and it copies the entire thing copy okay yeah so now in here I'm saying uh, uh, integer array integer size now in here I have dynamic array equals to new integer size then I'm going to say for integer i set to zero i less than size and i plus plus in here I'm going to say um let's put make this one professor and, yes Oh, thank you. I think it's just the terminology. I think I, I get it. It's just the terminology used. Okay. Yeah. So that's. Yeah, I understand it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. So, it's just the terminology so used. It, when I have something like this and the pointer is pointing to something outside of the class, 
then I need to create these three in here the characters inside the base I don't need it I'm just doing it for teaching purposes does that make sense yeah perfect. Um, sorry uh, yes father yes so if if I get what you're saying you're saying anytime um any of our um uh any of the members of our class is a pointer we need to create rule of three is that what you're saying in a nutshell Sorry. Hello? That, uh, sorry, I, I, I had to uh, stop the microphone for a second. Okay. You said any what, anytime any member is a pointer, we have to do rule of three. You said this is what you're saying, right? Is, yeah, I'm asking if that's what okay, you no, mean. Let me tell you sure. something. Never, ever in programming make rules like that for yourself. Ever. Listen to what I just said. I said, if resources are outside of the class, if resources are outside of the class, you need the rule of three. Now, a pointer is a good example for it. But when you're saying every time is a pointer in there, no, sometimes I just want to have a pointer. The pointer is my data. I don't want the dynamic data. So in here, I'm going to say integer pointer address, and I just want to hold an address. And that address is not supposed to get copied. My purpose is not that. So this is, then the name of the thing is address holder. So my data is just an address. This is the purpose of this class. Why do I need to do a dynamic thing in here? because the data is the address. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. Now, another thing. What if I say over here, F stream file? Is file a pointer? Talk to me. Is file a pointer? No, it's an object, oh, right? No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Where is the file held? Where do you outside. hold it? On the hard outside. drive, correct? On the yeah. hard drive. It's not inside the mm -hmm. class, correct? Yeah. This yeah. is a class with resource. It needs the rule of three. Uh, is it? That was a beautiful question you asked, actually. I really thank you for that. Okay? So... <laughs> So everybody should, should pay attention to this. When we say resources outside of the class, use your logic. Don't blindly say, okay, Farnad's given. The reason that we are doing pointers over here, because we are very, very no novice when it comes to C++ programming. I have to give you something that is easy to understand so we can do it. And pointers are something that you learn in IPC 144, and we can just deal with it here. That's the reason we are using that. But it's not... Uh, always that case. You have to always ask yourself, does the data of this class exist outside? If it does, then you need rule of three. If it doesn't exist outside of the scope of the class, then no, you don't need rule of three. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Anyone else? Uh, any of these good questions? These are nice questions that we are asking. Victor, is it slow enough? <laughs> 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 I am um, I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna bug think... you with that till the end of the semester. <laughs> <laughs> I think um the the confusion there was um you were using the word resource a lot and I think it's got when do you have resources? To... Now when in English when you say I have resources, where are the resources? Usually they're outside of the territory of something. Resource is something that you obtain from outside. That's why they call it classes with resources. Mm. Yeah. So when you have, so of the, I wish they could say uh, classes with data outside of their scope. That would have been a long title, right? <laughs> so <laughs> instead, they're just going to say um, resource. So now, uh, so now that we made that clear, so we understand that this base class does not need the rule of three. Okay. I'm just writing the rule of three so I can track them, debug them see how they work it's like it's a period dish it's a it's a it's a it's a lab uh, uh, an examination tube for me i'm just putting the stuff in there see how it react that's what i'm doing okay
Now, okay, so um, let's uh, let's look at other things. So in here, if I if I write over here, I don't know b, and I'll put over here x. Actually, let's do it properly. Equals to x. Now, what is being called now, by the way? What is being called, people? At line 79, what is being called? Final exam. What is being called? The funny thing is that I mentioned this like 50,000 times. Uh, I said, what is being called? Somebody said line. Oh. Yeah, you're actually right. Javier, you're right. But what is it called? Uh, Bruno, you're oh, saying the constructor. Uh, the, the constructor with one argument. One argument. Thank you. I mentioned it so many times. So many times in class. And still, only one person answered it correctly. One person. Just look at the answers, please, in the thing. We have copy assignment, copy constructor, base constructor. I don't even know what that is. Line 50 wife was correct. Derived. Derived? Really? And people are saying line 55. When I say correct, I mean because they didn't see this. That's why they chose that one. It's actually base, not derived. Derived is not even here. I haven't even written anything about the road. But when Javier said 55, I know what he meant. So uh, that was fine. But the rest of you, none of you wrote anything in here that was correct. Okay? None of you. Number six was correct too, kind of. But I don't know um, who that person was. But anyways, please, please, please remember. And I mentioned this 50,000 times. Now I'm going to write it assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor heavenly sake please constructor constructor how many times i have to mention this one Father, argument some, constructor somebody somebody said the base constructor yeah that's wrong which constructor base has one, two, three constructor. Which one? Of course, base constructor, but base constructor with one argument. That somebody said it right. Maybe he meant it right. But you have to mention it correctly. That's the thing. So one argument constructor, always. One argument constructor. This is the same as base B. x and base b x and base b equals to x these four things mean the same do we understand this now, hopefully? Are we all good about this, please? Assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor. Okay, so yeah, so if I run this program, you will see that it's one argument constructor will be called. Let's actually write something in here. Uh, So I'm going to say C out, C out, base, data, one, arg, constructor. Okay, and in here I'm going to say 
see out. <clears throat> defaulting to defaulting base to B. Okay. You know what? I'm going to change all these. So this C out, I'm going to go C log. C log, C log, C log, C log. Show, I'm going to let it be because it's showing. The reason I'm doing this is so I can turn it off and on if I want to. So this is C log, C log. C log. I think we are good. Okay. Reason I'm, I did this is that uh, I want it to. Uh, I want to be able to turn it on and off. So now, if I if I run this program now, it's gonna go like this. So it's gonna sh show this. Uh, base x one argument constructor. Then it comes out. Then it's gonna show it. Then it's going to go in the destructor. It's going to say destro destroying base, right? So maybe I need to do it like this so it's consistent. Anyways, and then it comes out. But now you know that we can actually set it to, to null. So you did that in a status, right? Yeah, to, to, to deactivate it. So I can actually, I can do over here C log dot set state iOS fail bit, right? iOS fail bit. Now, if I run it, you're not going to see any error message being printed because it's in a failed state. Do we understand this? Okay. All right. So uh, it's kind of a turning lo the the uh, thing to on and off. So uh, let's comment that. Now, if I run it, I can see that actually it says. One argument constructor is created, then base x is printed, and then uh, base with x is created in the other one. Actually, let me take all the spaces out. It's not uh, consistent. I don't like it. Uh, somebody asked something or said something. Uh, yeah, can I uh, ask a question? You can ask 50,000 questions. Uh, so, uh, actually, I... So if you look at line seven and eleven, so you write uh, seven and eleven. Uh, yes. So what is different to writing uh, with semicolon and inside of curly brackets? Is it just to make shorter our code or no? What? No, no, no. I mentioned it again. So let's let's repeat that. This is initialization. Uh, you, uh, first of all, Ali, what is the difference between initialization and setting? Let me ask you. Let me ask you this. I'm gonna come in here. This is actually a good review. Integer i is set to ten. Integer j j set to ten. What is the difference between these two statements? Uh, so at creation time uh, seventy two, it's initial. Uh, we initialize i. Yes, it's yes, initialized. but. 76 it's uh, second because like initialization it's when we give a value in creation time so when it's created it gets a value but setting it's when the variable is already created and then uh, in different parts of code we set it to some value fantastic that was an awesome answer all right now this is exactly what it is when you put it over here you're initializing m data to b if we have done it like this you are setting it so setting let's put it like this overwriting b with uh, sorry m data with b In here, you are initializing m data with b. 
And in here, you are initializing M data with question mark. But of course, this has priority. If you write this, this will be ignored. Got it? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, but there is another catch to this. Now that you mentioned it, let me complete it. Okay? When you initialize something, so what did we say this is? Remember? Initialization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I assignment at the moment of creation is what? Uh, it's a call to a one argument constructor, correct? Uh, yes, yes. So I could have written it like this, correct? It's the same. Yes. Or I could have written it like this. It's the same, correct? Yes. Okay. So, int, if int is an object, which constructor is going to get called now? Uh, default. Default constructor, yes. So, so, back to base. If you do not initialize the data over here, M data must have a default constructor, otherwise the compilation fails. In this, if and if you don't have this one, you follow what I'm saying? Yes, yes. M data first must get created, then overwritten by B. But when I do this and not this one then M data doesn't need a default constructor. All it needs is a one argument constructor that is set to B, that is that accepts a character. Are we okay with this? Yes. There we go. So again, what is the difference between the two? It's not only shorter, but this is initialization. And this one is overwriting. Let me co comment this one. And let's continue. Okay. So that's that. We created the the base class so and we have uh, the rule of three for it sorry victor Father. yes yeah um, just a, a quick uh, question on the the question you asked earlier concerning the copy the one argument constructor because you know your questions in the exam used to be tricky so <laughs> let me just put in one say you have a constructor because from the workshops you've been giving us um I notice we don't usually uh, have like two or three constructors. What you usually, what the instruction will say is, this argument can take one. This constructor can take one argument. It can also take three arguments. So what we have to do is just make the other two to be to have default values. Yes, exactly. So essentially, in that what, case, so this is what you had over there. Now this has that now line forty seven acts like two constructors. Exactly. So one as okay. one argument constructor, and if not provided, it will be D. Okay, let's let's assume that it, it even has uh, two two arguments inside. Okay. Uh, and one of them is defaulted. So going no, no, back no, no, to no, the no, question... no 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 no. Say it right. If it has two arguments, the second one can be defaulted, okay, not one of them. One, the second one, the, the uh -huh. second one can be So character can be CH defaulted. and character data D, okay? Exactly. So if I'm calling uh, the question you asked us earlier, would the answer still be a call to a one argument constructor? Can that still be the answer given this scenario I just painted now? On yes, it is a one argument constructor because derive can access uh, act as two. Two argument constructor or this is defaulted, it becomes one argument constructor. Yes. So the answer is still a call to one argument constructor irrespective Always. of the... Yes. Okay. Line number 48 is two constructors. One constructor is two argument constructor. The second one is one argument. Correct? Oh, yeah, correct. There we go. Yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. It's always to one argument constructor or an a, a constructor with, yeah, a one argument constructor.
okay so yeah all right so <laughs> um let's uh, go to the derived one so i created the exact same class over here called derived that is deriving from base my purpose over here is not to make mace better my purpose over here is just to tr trace the execution and understand how they are working so i'm going to copy this comment that i have over here and put it right over here i'm going to say defaulting derived to to d and in here i'm going to say uh exactly like this one i'm going to say derived one argument constructor now what i want to say is it and that and as you see the logic in the constructors are identical so whoops this one has a copy constructor has an assignment operator everything is working exactly the same way and a destructor and a show obviously i did not to create to overload the insertion operator for the derived because it is all already over here and since show is virtual automatically this is going to be used for the second one too are we okay with this all right so now what i'm going to do is going to create the derive so this one uh, let me just take uh ta -ta 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 -ta. in here i'm gonna put this one over here and these ones i'm going to comment and i'm going to say finish okay so save this and i'm going to save this as a base tester so now let's talk about the derived tester so i'll take all these things out we know exactly what they are i don't want to clutter the thing in here i'm going to say derived d and i'm going to put over here d so if i run the program now i'm just going to run it and then afterwards i'm going to follow so let's run it and see what the output is and as you see because derived is already made out of base it's going to say when you are cre creating a derived d as you see it says base y why did, why does it say base y because in the derived I decided to add one to the ASCII code of data and pass it to the base so I can see the difference between the two. So base Y belongs to X and it says derive X holding base Y inside and derive X and derive base is destroyed over here. So we see it uh, and, and that's it. So um, um, let's walk through it to, to generate the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna start over here the constructor is called it comes over here it asks for the invocation of the constructor in the initialization area goes back up to the base constructor over there it sets the data to the value of that is passed that is y so data becomes y prints the message base y one argument constructor comes out over here now the data of this one is set to x and it says derive x1 argument comes out now it goes to show because insertion operator is overloaded for base it comes over here b is now referencing base to a derived therefore when show is called because it's virtual the latest version is called therefore it shows the derived holding and then it shows the base and it says inside so derive holding base y inside comes out then everything dies in reverse order which means first derived uh, destructor is called 
it call it uh, says the um, uh, um, destructor of derived and then goes to the base and because it's virtual if it uh, in, uh, it, it has nothing to do with virtual because uh, uh, derive is drive but um, base is virtual anyways uh, the, the, the destructor is virtual just in case and then it uh, calls the base and we are done uh, are we okay down to this point <laughs> Vincent, Victor, William, oh, Victor is not okay. What's going on with her? Tell me, what's up? I understand the, con the constructor and the destructor, but the, I think I got lost at the, the virtual part, the so stream show at. Okay, all right, now. What is the purpose of a virtual, Victor? It's an interview. I want to hire you as a C++ programmer. What is the purpose of virtual in C++? It's, it's, it's to ensure that in a, in a um, hierarchy, latest version of a method is called. Thank you. Hierarchy of inheritance. Thank you. In the hierarchy of inheritance, the latest version of the method is called, correct? No. OK. So in here, I'm going to say C out D. What is that left side of this operator? Uh, um, is it insertion or what's the name? The, the O stream. Thank you. It's uh, O stream. What is the right instance? What is the right operand of this operator? It's a class. What is the name of that class? The derived class. Thank you. It's derived class. Is it fair to say that derived class is a base class too? There's, there's nothing inheriting from it. Is it fair to say that you, Victor, are a human being? I'm just asking. <laughs> I want to believe so. You think so, right? Yeah. Correct? So if I say feed a human being, will I feed you? D depends on the human being you're referring to. I said any human being. Any human being you see, feed them. Will you be fed? Yes. Why? You're a male male uh, i don't know from wherever you are but <laughs> you're a male human being you're not just a human being that's the thing derive is a base you don't need to think about that because of inheritance you are a human being you are a male human being obviously there are many other th different human beings but when you are saying a human being is supposed to be fed all human beings are fed. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Beautiful. In here, I said all bases are to be displayed. Is it fair to say that derive is a base? Yeah, yes. I wrote this before. I'm going to write it again. Derive is a base, correct? Yeah, correct. Fantastic. So, the left one is C out, the right side is, is derive. Derive is a base, therefore, this function will be called left side O stream, right side base. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Now, repeat that virtual thingy that you told me. What was that virtual thing you told me? Guarantees that the latest version of, of the method is of called. method is called. Do we have a latest method of show in, in B in here? Is B a base or a derive in this function call? <laughs> is B in this function call? In this function call, B is a base or it's a derived? 
based on line 83 based on line 83 based on line 83 is this b a base or it's a derived referred by a base it's it is a what <laughs> question is confusing it's not confusing are you a human being yes yes is this a derive the answer is yes it's the same thing we have class victor public human <laughs> okay victor okay. is a human right human mm -hmm. fed victor will be fed correct it's the same <laughs> thing over here yeah. i have I have public, I have I have derive is a base, correct? Okay. Now yeah. I'm saying print a derive, see out a derive. I have see out a base. Base, a base is a derive. Okay. Therefore B is pointing to a to a derive, correct? Yeah, correct. When I say B show, it comes to B show. But this is not a B. This is a derive. Is there another derived, version of yeah. show? Yes. yes. There's a new version yes. of show. So the latest and version derived. of show is called, hence, the derive will be printed, <laughs> not base. Okay. Does that okay, make sense? Okay. okay. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Beautiful. All right. Yeah. Good. So that's that. Um, now, are we okay down to this point? Please stop me. This is a good review session. I love it. All right. So, Maria, was uh, was it you who asked uh, 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 classes with resource? Was it Maria? I think Maria is gone. Yes, it's, I think that was the question she asked. Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to, because I wanted to tell her something right now. I'm here, yes, I'm here. <laughs> did you just run back to the computer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you yeah. did. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I don't know, your your husband was like, hey, come hurry up, she's gone. <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah, so, remember we said classes with resources? Need rule of three, remember that? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to comment the rule of three in here. You see that? That's the first rule of three being commented. So this class doesn't have rule of three implemented. What the devil happened? Yeah. This class doesn't have rule of three implemented anymore. And I'm going to go to the derived one and completely comment that one. So no rule of three for this one either. Are we okay with this? Oh, actually, let's let's back, let's get back with to this structure. I'm gonna let it be. There is no copy constructor. There is no copy assignment. Are we okay with this? Yeah. What I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna have a derived over here x, and instead of showing it like this, I'm gonna say show. Let's call this one x. I'm gonna say show x. Now, Maria, when I call show X, what happens to D? Do you remember that? X is being passed by value to D. It means what of D is being called? So the show is called like this. Show derived D is set to X. This is what is being called. What is assignment at the moment of creation? call to a one argument constructor so a one argument constructor of d will be called and the argument type is another derived therefore the copy constructor will be called at any moment you pass anything by value a copy constructor will be called so copy constructor of derived will be called now 
we did not implement a copy constructor because we did not implement the copy constructor that uh, blind copying is going to happen which is essentially everything from one will be copied to the another one because we already mentioned that this two, these two classes really they don't have any resources this will work like a charm which means when I actually run this it's going to give me build error why no instance of the error matches the argument is there what did I do let me see what I've done um, did I comment something wrong no this is good how about base did I comment something wrong yes 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 I commented too much oh my god all right that's better that's better okay okay so when I run it now this is what happens so here the one argument constructor is called when I go show X the copy constructor of V is called which I did not create therefore no message will be printed as you see and then it's going to go say C out D and as you see it is X holding Y then that D in show is going to die then it come back to main now X will die do we understand this all right so that's what I created now I understand what happens so let's one by one add the rule of three to this and see what happens what happens if I do not implement the rule of three for the uh, for the derived class and I only implement it for base am I in the clear is everything okay so I'm gonna come over here and do it like this which means the rule of three is imp are implemented for the base but not for the derived and in here to make things even better what I will do is this let me just put over here B like that so so B okay and then in here I'm gonna do uh, derived C so I have a C over there now I'm gonna say C is equal to B okay so and we don't need the show thingy over here anymore I'm not gonna do that instead because it's gonna be too many things getting printed I'm gonna have uh, let's have this one as a and I'm gonna have derived C set to B so I think by mistake we no we have a default constructor why is it giving me an error what does it say it's because of misspelling no this is not misspelled has more oh it's that thingy that I give you guys put an example for for Victor it's all Victor's fault okay now it's good <laughs> I put a default argument over there it says what the heck you're doing anyways so now I have a default constructor created then a copy constructor uh, th then a regular constructor for drive B C is being copied I don't want to show anything and then C is being assigned remember this is the case that this is the case that derive class does not implement the rule of three but the base does so we want to see if the base needs rule of three do I need to do rule of three for the derived one too so this is the scenario we want to test we want to test if 
the base needs rule of three and the derived class does not implement the rule of three but the base does if this thing o is okay or not I want to see if actually the base gets copied or not and when I run the program we will see that <coughs> it uh, the first one is defaulting A to B which is correct the second one set so b as you see over here it defaults the false base and the false uh, derived to D so if I look at over here we will see that let me see if everything's okay over here let's walk through it stop yeah so it's defaulting base to B that's correct and defaulting derived to D so this is both uh, defaulted in here is one argument constructor so it creates base to Y because the base is getting set and sets uh, uh, what should I call it sets um, let me just put these things like this see out I want to put some uh, C log in here I'm gonna say default just want to put some space between them so we can see exactly what it is and then in here I'm gonna go <coughs> one arc this one is copy and this one is assignment let's run it one more time so we can actually see what's going on in here <coughs> there we go so the default is done one argument constructor base is y derived is x but take a look at this when copy happens because the derived one did not implement the copy there is no copying shown over there but base is copied perfectly okay and it's the uh, the exact same thing for the other one but so and so let's take a look at all the things that are uh, that are dying right now so <coughs> and the assignment is the same thing too the base is uh, uh, set uh, uh, perfectly good too and when you look at the destruction the last one dies first which means C dies first the copy of B and it's X and Y so it's perfectly good then B itself dies is okay and the derived one is dying is okay so a copy is okay the uh, uh, assignment is okay too so it is very okay and just just for the heck of it I'm gonna go see out a and I'll do the same thing for B and C so we make sure everything is done properly okay run it one more time there we go so as you see over here A is defaulted uh, B is one argument and then copying happens which is essentially uh, copying uh, C uh, copying uh, B into C which is happening perfectly as you see it's copied and then assignment which is perfectly done okay so in here I'm gonna actually write over here assigning C to B <coughs> this one is gonna be actually let's uh, let's put this make this one a that's better <coughs> assigning a to B and copy <coughs> B to C okay one more time there we go so <coughs> one more time double checking we copied we copied uh, B to C which 
the value of B is actually created, which is perfectly good. We assigned A to B. As we see over here, actually it is copied perfectly okay. Then we looking, so it actually essentially assigns B to Y, which is perfectly good. So A becomes XX, B becomes XX, C becomes XX. Everything is fantastic and nothing is wrong in here. So beautiful. Um, default A, one arg B to X value. And copying yada yada yada. It's just uh, uh, printing the values so we can see. <coughs> so we understand now. So root thing number one. This test shows us that number one. <coughs> if base requires rule of three. Three, but derive does not. There is no need to implement the rule of three for derive. Okay, that's first thing. Are we okay down to this point? Javier, go ahead. Do you have a microphone, Javier? I think your microphone is not set properly. Uh, reset it please just you can just go and click on the um, carrot right beside the audio and assign another uh, uh, another microphone I can't hear you All right, when it starts, test the echo. The echo, when you hear your own echo, that it is okay. If you don't hear the echo, then nothing comes out. And I can't hear you, Javier. All right. You know what? Uh, we are till 11.35, so let's get five minutes break, go and come back, and then we'll continue with the rest. So what are you uh, going to talk about after the break? Are you going to talk about, like, in the case, like, we're derived? Oh, yeah, need I'm going to go through all the cases. The... Huh? All, I'm going to go through all the cases, if the base doesn't okay. need it, but derive does it, which what what we need to do. So every Okay, okay. So I'm going to go through all different cases, one, two, three, four, five, six, and show you exactly what you need to do when you have derived classes with resource, okay? Okay, thank you. Five minutes. Uh, for that, can I, can, can I quickly call you on Teams for the five minutes? I, I need to take a break. So after five minutes, okay. yes, you can. Okay, uh, no problem. Yeah, <laughs> so I, need to, I need to take a break because my back hurts. <laughs> I have to stand up and stretch. Oh, sorry. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I'm pausing the recording. Please remind me to continue. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, the other half are not here yet, so I'll wait. Um, uh, Victor, you want to call me on Teams? If you want to... Say something yes, sir. All right. So let's uh, continue. All right. Um, so this is the first one where base needs uh, rule of three, but uh, derived do not need. 
and we know exactly what happened so we're going to take care of it like this now so I'm going to say over here a base rule of three derived base rule of three only okay that's CTP so base rule of three and now let's come over here and take a look at it and see what happens for the second scenario so now what if derive needs a rule of three and let me set myself to busy back to busy because uh, people are going to talk call me okay so now what if derive needs rule of three but base doesn't need it will everything get copied properly let's check it out so i'm just gonna copy uh, 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 comment basis i'm gonna let the uh, derive one be so derive one will have the rule of three set but base does not have it okay so if I do something like this, do I need to do anything with the base or the base is going to get done automatically? So if I run the program now, you will see that the construction is perfect. And this is one argument constructed that is fine too. As you see, X and Y, B and D, everything is good. Now we want to copy B into C. Okay so what happens is that the copy constructor of c is called and and it actually is going to copy x okay that is in derive so derive gets copied then it comes out and the same thing for the assignment when a is assigned to b it goes to the assignment and it does the assignment same thing that like it did with the other one but let's see actually the base part is copied or not if i continue with this you will see that sadly a is not copied properly as you see base remains b b is fine because it was uh, the one that was copied but c so b is actually x and y so th the other one should be y too that is not and if i look at c c is the same scenario so we find out that if if rule of three is implemented in the derived then the then the rule of three of the base is the programmer's responsibility. Which means if you define the rule of three of the derived, base is not going to get copied the other way was perfectly okay so if base needs rule of three and then you don't do anything to derive one then you're fine but at any moment of time if you the create the rule of three of the derived one then the base rule of three is not uh, uh, done so it's not actually uh, set and called so if I act, it, it, this shows you that you have to make sure that if you are actually um, create implementing the rule of three for the for the derived, you have to take care of everything. Let's set the rule of three of the base and see what happens. Just to show you, okay. So if I actually take this out back to here now. Okay, now if I actually implement the uh, rule of three at the base and derive, you will see that we are in 
this type of problem. So again, when I am copying the derive as C, that, no, this is not the one. When I'm copying B into C, when it comes over here, the derive will be copied. You see that? But again, nothing happens to the base. So just implementing the rule of three of the base is not enough. Still, it's not going to work out. You need to manually, the programmer needs to manually take care of the copying of the base. Okay? So in here, I'm going to say, oh, that should be. So in here, I'm going to say C uh, derive rule of three must take care of base. OK, so this is uh, actually let's let's rename it better. I'm going to say did not take care of uh, derive rule of three. Derive rule of three. will not take care of base automatically. Okay, so what I mean is that for this to actually work, you must manually in the derive do something so the base is copied properly. So I'm saying when the constructor of derived is called, exactly like you did in a regular constructor, in here you have to say, I want to invoke the base's constructor, copy constructor to copy D. And because base derive is a base, when D is passed to the copy constructor of base, automatically it will only copy the base part because that's the only thing it sees. Uh, and uh, and the, other th uh, the, uh, the same thing for the operator equal. If you are doing actually copying, you must make sure that the operator equal of the base is called. So you have to say base operator equal D and pass that one. Now, if I run this, you will see that. Now, if I run this, you will see that everything is copied perfectly. So when you actually look at it, um, it you will see when copy B to C happens, base gets copied, derive gets copied, assigning A to B, derive is assigned, base is assigned, and everything is copied properly. So if in any case, rule of three is implemented in the derive, then rule of three of the base is the programmer's responsibility and it's not going to be taken care of by the system. Do we understand this? There we go. Oh, so I said, shall we continue? <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me correct the question, correct the thing. So I'm going to say, do we understand this? <laughs> All right, so that's that. That is uh, the... Uh, the case that we have. There is no other thing that we need to do to, to um, um, worry about. So anyway, so a if, if in any case, like for example, if we didn't have, so this is where they are both created actually. So when we are doing something like this, if this didn't have the assignment operator or copy constructor, then how do I do it? So um, I'm gonna do it for the second one. So in here, I'm gonna, s I'm gonna call this one this is actually going to be this one. It's going to be D. Okay. Now, if the base does not have rule of three set, then how do I actually do it? How do I take care of the base part? The, uh, the answer is very easy. So, because the copy constructor is the systems, 
what you need to do over here is if so this will work perfectly so it doesn't matter um, um, that you are actually uh, I don't know why is uh, so oh I I I I I I I uh, uh, commented the wrong thing so these two are the ones yeah so if you do not have if base does not have rule of three implemented you can still call the base const uh, copy constructor it means the systems copy constructor will be called and for the assignment operator this is not going to work all you need to do is to say something like um, Um, so to assign the in here I have our operator D derived D is come over here so in here I have to say um, let me just check this first There you go. So if you do not implement the basis uh, assignment operator, if you do not implement the basis assignment operator and uh, copy constructor, you can still call them because the system will create one. So like this, you are telling to the compiler, do the normal copying for the base and uh, do the normal assignment for the base but when you are actually doing the derived one uh, I have resources and I want to set them up so it doesn't matter if the base's uh, rule of three is created or not in any case when you are implementing the <coughs> the rule of three for the derived you have to always take care of the base that's all so this one I'm going to say over here D even if base does not implement it <laughs> and that's that are we okay <laughs> right any questions all right ladies and gents thank you very much have yourself a beautiful day the quizzes are going to come up ready to do them all I'll um, bring them up one by one each one is going to have four days to do you're going to have time to do them all have yourself a beautiful day, and uh, I will talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.